Hello everyone, welcome back to Hexen, where we left off in the middle of a canyon. Just a canyon. I mean, it looks pretty good. I, I do tend to go on about how <laughs> these games still seem to look pretty good right now. Probably because I'm viewing it through the eyes of the eight-year-old that I may or may not have been when it came out. I'll do the maths for that at another time. For now, we are fighting off centaurs with nothing but our default mace, and of course we have a cleric. Oh shit. I don't like this at all. Okay. Um, so that's a thing. That's one of those things where I, I'm fairly sure that what happened was I killed enough of these um, centaurs, and that was really the only thing that I had to do in order to uh, in order to open up this area. But this area is pretty scary because, as you can see, it has the things that we're used to from the uh, crucible that we were in on the last. At the end of the last, uh, the secret level at the end of the last hub. Except these things are shooting at me and not waiting. However, it did not seem to take too much to actually, uh, get rid of it. Which helps a great deal, but at the same time I'd also like to... Christ, kill it! <laughs> okay, this is a lot more difficult than maybe you might originally have anticipated. Uh, let's, let's use that. I'm not sure what to do here, we only have 61, uh blue manas, and we're going to need basically all of it, probably, to get through this bit. Now, these ones are not shooting at me, so I'm half inclined just to keep trying this. I'm hoping for the best. I'm maybe saving the mana to get rid of the ones that pop up at a distance and do shoot. Which is basically over here. That was an odd. Uh, odd little animation that went on over there. It's sort of floating around. I think the um, the enemies are bobbing up and down, and the animation bobs up and down, which is a strange combination. Uh, <laughs> help. Oh, there's Etins. Oh, there's a bag. Oh, I don't like it. We may die straight away, that's fine. Pop up then. Man, it's like Isaac, waiting for the hosts to pop up. Come on. Missed. Not useful. Need to not waste this mana. Gotcha. Right, there's one more, I think. I can't be sure. Because they only seem to sort of slime around at random when they... There is. <laughs> I was talking and managed not to shit myself in this sentence. Are you proud? I don't think that there's any guarantee that they're going to sort of show up, basically. Um, you know, doing that sort of messy thing that they like to do. I also don't know when they go back in whether you can continue to track their position. It's interesting. Also, this thing keeps disappearing and coming back. That's a, a new thing they didn't really do in previous games, is to just have something for its own sake. Very interesting. I like it. I'm down with it. We'll be running around with this a little bit longer, I think. So this will be where we came in on account of how there's loads of dead stuff. It is slightly disorienting. Disorientating? Because <laughs> there was a wall before and I was sort of following it. I'm going to keep using this rising inflection. So we've been here, but I should probably pick this up. This could simply be a spawned in Etin. Don't forget that in Hexen, you get random spawns of enemies. Just here and there to shit you up, basically. Where do we want to go? Maybe down here? I mean, I don't think we've been this way, but I'm kind of reluctant to... <laughs> to s s aggro any more enemies than I have to. There's nothing here except for... Crystal vials, but I think they're gonna. Uh, quartz flasks, I believe, but I think they're gonna come in useful. We have 19 left, which honestly is way more than I would anticipate having at this stage of the game. We have used a few, and we could stand to use one now, but I'm kind of holding out for the idea that um, maybe there'll just be more crystal vials floating around, and I don't have to use what could turn out to be basically a lifesaver at a difficult moment. I expect in each area, there's going to be something like the Wendigo trap that we had at the end of, near the end of the last hub, where you just have to burn through your inventory HP uh, somewhat, you know, somewhat uh, without consideration. Wantonly, you might say. Let's get rid of this before it fires. Very good. There's a serpent over there, not fun. So if we can uh, use environmental HP, shall we call it, rather than inventory HP, as much as possible, I think we're going to have a, a good time. I'm pretty sure we haven't been here yet. We may have done since it's all mapped. 
It's kind of difficult to know because mapping does sort of take place. Like, you just have to have line of sight of any part of the wall and it will map the whole wall. Which is, you know, it's a... It's not something you can... <laughs> Boy, oh, hey, hello. Uh, I guess we do something about this in the... Oh, shit, Ben. I got stuck. We're okay. Very much like these things to die as a result of walking over those spiky things, but that's not going to happen. So you came from here. Mana. Look, look, look. So this is full mana right here. And we get to use it whenever. Cratter of might. Uh, check you're not standing on anything dangerous before you open up the map. And we use F to turn follow mode off. And we use the arrow keys to move around. Now, the... Either yellow or green, you'll have to forgive me, is a locked door. And I can see... Really nowhere that we haven't been. Down here is a teleporter that will take us somewhere else, but we have to open the area. Which means the only real place left to go is that uh, place with the rotating door with a bad guy behind it. But we have found... Uh, that was an unnecessarily gendered term for what is effectively a big snake. Uh, I apologise. I'll try to do better. But, you know, bad guy is just such a common term. It's very difficult to remove it from your sort of fast access cache, I suppose, that we have inside our heads to, to describe something using very simple and oft accessed terms of phrases. It's all, the whole part of communication is that we use the first thing that comes to our head to most accurately represent the thing that we're trying to describe. And if people say bad guy often enough, it becomes synonymous with the concept of an adversary We've been here, right? That's where the porculator was. Porculator? Hmm. Now notice how there's two colours of... a sort of backdrop. Whey! Hello. Didn't appreciate that at all. I'm just going to use one of these now because I feel like we've somewhat exhausted our supplies of environmental HP. We've already been up here. I'm not quite sure how to recognise the... I don't like that sound. The rotating door on the map. It may be down there. <coughs> Don't like the fact I can hear a serpent. But it may be because there's a serpent behind the rotating door, right? So, yeah, here we go. Open this. We shoot a couple of times. We do it again. It won't take too many shots to kill this thing. And hopefully, if we just run in, get the shit out of it and carry on. Gonna have to use a couple of these. I think that's okay. As long as we get sort of further on, I think we've done ourselves some great justice. I'd like to stop this thing on these spikes, but these spikes seem to be extremely buggy in this uh, particular engine. And I don't know why. It could just be an oversight or maybe a, a misunderstanding of the original code. It's very difficult, indeed, to re-implement something when you don't have the original documentation. Maybe you don't have... I mean... Half the time, it's difficult to just fix something when you know what it's supposed to do. So the fact that they've re-implemented this engine so well, without so many bugs as there are, I think that's quite admirable. So we should just be able to entice things over here. You can see they're going up and down very slowly, but some of them are getting stuck. Um, which is definitely a bug. They're not supposed to get stuck, that's for sure. Some of them aren't happening at all. Some of them are staying up. But if you play the original game, you'll see that they actually thrust with uh, quite some confidence when they actually go off. So, right, see, it's not supposed to stay up for that long. Coming up here or what? The pathfinding is... Um, leaves a lot to be designed, I think you could say. I don't want to say amateurish. I was trying not to say amateurish because obviously it's merely a function of its age rather than... The fact that it was made by people who don't know what they're doing. I wonder if the um, pathfinding was re-implemented or sort of borrowed. I understand that id will open source an engine when they release a new one. So I would not be surprised if they... It's moving! Didn't know they did that. I assume that they open sourced this en engine, but that doesn't mean that it came with any support or even information, you know? 
not necessarily in documentation. Maybe they still had the comments in the original code, but there's no there's no like onus on them to give the community all the information they need to completely rewrite the engine from scratch in OpenGL. I'm a bit concerned by this thing just sort of hovering around there. It could entirely be due to the fact that it um, it's slightly too wide to believe that it fits. Like, we fit because we probably have only a small... Ooh, this is bad. Um, a small actual area, or possibly a wide area, anywhere on which we are considered to be standing on the surface, and therefore there's a little bit of... You know, there's a little bit of leeway involved in whether we're standing on something or not, whereas they are going to say, well, I can't fit between there and there, so I'm not going to do it. That would be my assumption, and this is going to be a bad time. Run. We did it. That was a lot harder in the old days when you had to use a keyboard and try and do it one by one. I will try to kill this unit here. Now, we've got a key. I neglected to note to my own satisfaction what the name of the key was. But we have a couple of key holes to try, so why not try them? This is, of course, don't forget this is the first world that we've even visited on this hub. So it could well be... Yep, that's the right way. It could well be that we simply have to find another world with the, the keyhole in it. Oh, I've got an easy eyeball. You have to excuse me a moment. Thank you for your patience. So it's not this one, I'm fairly confident. That's the cave key. I think it might be the, the castle key or the night key. I didn't really see. You, of course, can just rewind or pay attention in the first place and have a look. I'm going to go find the place where the swamp opened up. This this actually is a very confusing map for saying how simple the engine is and the fact that it's just two dimensions. It's not like the caves loop on top of one another. You don't have to go up and down. You don't have to figure anything out. You just hit the map and lo and behold, there it is. Oh, it turns out it just looks like a wall. Uh, so we want to go over here. And then it looks like straight on. Yeah, let's try that. Hmm. I wasn't going to do it while I couldn't see because I didn't want to stand on one of those when it went up. Those things are not actually all that dangerous. Except when you suddenly forget about them and then they are. So we need the swamp key for this. I think we have to go back, which is fine. That's the point of this whole game. Exploration, returning to where you have been and hoping that something has changed. It's a big part of Hexen, which is, as I was mentioning earlier on, a very new idea in the whole field of gameplay in the first place. Game design. Let's see if we can find our way back. It's probably up one of these. Uh, I think we want to go to this one here where the brakes are. So we'll get some pretty nice base going on here as well. So we'll go that way. <clears throat> Those things will kill you in one hit, by the way. So don't pretend you're uh, even remotely safe just because you're going over them fast. They only need to start popping up. And you're dead. Yeah, they're going very slowly, which seems non ideal. That's okay. Right. Ah, oh, this is actually probably. Oh, I don't know. I don't want to pick up dual mana because we have 200 green mana. And the problem with having 200 green mana is if you pick up anything that gives you green mana and you don't need it, at some point you will need it. We haven't got our green mana. Have we been that way? Yes, that's the way you have to go and then it opened it up to make it quicker backwards, which is a very tropey trope of old games, possibly even new games. You know, you do a difficult path and then it opens up a shortcut when you have succeeded. Uh, let's go and do the swamp, which is probably my favourite level, and therefore I've saved it. It's in here. Is that, this is not only ooh, okay, not only my favourite level, but probably my favourite sort of part of a hub. I remember the seven portals was very... I tried to jump backwards, but I hit my head on the, on the ceiling, which is a problem. We start picking up the crystal vials, they're going to get a lot more important in the future. Um, the seven portals was very irregular, and it probably sort of belied the amount of imagination that they've put into 
other portal hub worlds. Uh, that was a very bad place to stand. Because you can see in that one it's like there's literally seven portals. There were six portals which took you to three separate worlds. Um, and in this one, I believe there are also six portals because it's two ways to each world. But you can see how much more themed each area's um, sort of portal area is. This one has become... It's, it's not just three or six very similar chambers with very similar ways in. Dodging like a champ right now, I hope you're noticing this. In this case, we have this uh, castle thing going on. Which is going to be very interesting in a minute. Uh, anyone who's ever played a game before is already aware that these are traps. <laughs> As are these. There's goopies down there. That's locked, but we can jump safely, I think. Uh, I landed on one, which makes me sad. In a sad way. I'm trying to maybe leap some HP from them, but I don't want to waste all my uh, blue mana. Which makes it diff. A stalker. So there we go, we've learned something. Just pick these up. And uh, nip on back to that place. We need these. Yeah, might as well take them. No reason to not take them at this stage. I think some of these um, pop into clouds of uh, poison. Come on, then. Bite your legs off. Just shoot them. The viewers are getting impatient. There's a current as well. I'm pretty sure currents have existed in all these games, but I still like the idea that it's, um, it's just atmospheric to be dragged along to that thing makes it difficult to fight those efforts. So yeah, in the uh, Seven Portals it was very regimented, but in this one it's, it's much more chaotic. It's just a... Uh, it's obviously representing a forest. In fact, there was a, a whole load of uh, blurb when we got to this place saying that we're in a forest. <clears throat> which has these sort of caves and people have built random things. It's still a, a little bit abstract. I find this about these old games. When they have a limited amount of tools with which to describe the world that they're trying to put you into, it's still very abstract. There's no grounding in any sort of what I would call reality. I was talking about uh, suspension of disbelief in a recent episode, and it's kind of that. I, I thought I could dodge that, but apparently I was mistaken. Um, it's very much a suspension of disbelief type of thing. In that I, I wouldn't really believe that someone would build something like this in a place like this. So it's one of those where the heck did all this come from sort of suspensions of disbelief. Just, just hit them. Just <laughs> run around and hit them. Wow. I got stuck in two of them. I'm going to put a cut in here. Uh, and I'm going to come back when I've actually killed these things. So I'll see you in a moment. Okay, I think I did it. To be honest, it was pretty badass. And if I can figure out how, I might even do some sort of, you know, post-processing overlay of how awesome it was to stand in the middle of them all and just drain all their health one by one. Now, I believe this switch will open those, which helps because I can get some mana. This switch activates uh, Funky Town. So we press this. They start going. Nope, this switch is the first step to Funky Town. Let me take you. So, wait. I think it's probably a bad idea to step on these in any respect. Oh, there we go. So, Funky Town has begun. <laughs> As you can see, this is a trap. It's quite slow, though. Oh, I just walked, I headbutted the uh, microphone. I apologize if you heard that. <laughs> because I was... Because I'm playing a game and I do things as though I'm the character. Okay. We pick up these. We pull this switch. That Minotaur, by the way, fights for you. You remember um, at the end of Rorax's Heretic series, there was, there was there was a fight against the Minotaur. You get one, except it fights for you. So it's that Minotaur that you have to beat in Heretic. Not at the end of it. It's the end of one of the chapters, I believe. Um, that Minotaur comes to fight for you. Because obviously the end of Heretic was uh, you fought Disparal, the Serpent Rider. Ow. Okay, that's okay. Um, these have now raised. 
So we go up here. This is uh, a bit jarring as well, the wooden top and stone side. I mean, it's okay. Don't get me wrong, I'm not hugely complaining about it. It's just one of those things, again, I was talking about willing suspension of disbelief before I uh, put the cut in to deal with those stalkers, but that's another one. I, I don't really feel like that works, and maybe someone just forgot to change those textures. That's entirely possible, but this whole thing is so bizarre. Oops, I accidentally picked up two, but it, uh, it just doesn't seem to... Make too much sense to me. Well, I'm going to put a cut in here, and I mean a proper cut between episodes. Thank you for watching. We're going to jump through this portal at the start of the next episode, so I hope that you will join me then.